So this is the 9.3 video, and we're going to look at the integral test and the P-series test. Most of it is going to be integral test. P-series test we'll talk about a little bit at the end, and then I'll do a quick summary of the tests that you've had so far. So the integral test, you are going to be comparing a series to an integral. And this typo here, there should be or, not of. So if you have a positive continuous decreasing function, then if this integral converges, then the series also converges. If the integral diverges, then the series also diverges. So the reason you would want to use the integral test versus some other test is if you are looking for whether a, a particular series converges or diverges, and it happens to be one that when you look at it, you know how to take the integral of it. If you look at the, um, the rule for the series and you don't know how to take the integral of it, try a different test. Don't use the integral test unless you know how to take the integral. Uh, I don't think there are specific tests where you are going to be asked to use those specific tests. I don't think I've ever seen that with the integral test. So it's one that you should be aware of, but there are other ones that... that you would be asked to use by name. So I'm going to go through a couple examples of how you would use the integral test. So this one, I'm going to compare this integral, or sorry, this series to the integral. Um, so it'd be 1 to infinity. I'm going to change it to x. It doesn't really matter what variable you use, but usually you have integrals with x's, but um, this is with n, so if you want to keep it with n, that's totally fine. So this one you would use u substitution. It is a, an improper integral, so if you needed to actually show the work for it, then you would need a limit. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to do the antiderivative off to the side here without the bounds, and so then when I go to do the limit, I can just plug that in and it's a little bit less writing. So it's going to be u substitution, so you have u is going to be 2x plus 1, so du is 2x dx. 1 half du equals x dx. So this is going to be 1 half du over u. So that's going to be 1 half ln of x squared plus 1. So this is going to be limit as b approaches infinity, 1 to b, x squared plus 1 dx. So limit as b approaches infinity of this. which is limit as b approaches infinity, 1 half ln of b squared plus 1 minus 1 half <clears throat> ln of 2. So as b approaches infinity, this part right here is approaching infinity. So that means this entire thing, and then I'm subtracting a constant, but it's still going to be infinity. So this integral diverges, which means this series also diverges. So you would say this diverges by the integral test. So one nice thing about the integral test is it can be used to say that a series converges or diverges. So the nth term test that was in 9.2, that's one that you can only use to say that something converges. So there are some tests that you can only use to say this converges. If the test doesn't work, then you need to find something else. So on one hand, it has to be something that you know how to take the integral of. On the other hand, it's nice because it will tell you exactly what's happening. So this one looks very similar, except it's a 1 on top instead of an n. So limit as b approaches infinity, 1 to b. The antiderivative of this is arctan. So this is going to be arctan of x from 1 to b. Uh, 
arctan of b minus arctan of 1. As b approaches infinity, arctan is approaching the, that's going to be the horizontal asymptote, which is going to be pi over 2. And arctan of 1 is pi over 4. So this is going to end up being pi over 4. So because this integral converges, that means this converges by the integral test. What you want to be careful with is don't say that it converges to pi over 4. So if the integral converges, then that just tells us that the series converges. It doesn't tell us what it converges to. The only type of series that you would be asked what type, um, or sorry, what it converges to, it would be geometric. So if you are being asked to say not just does the series converge or diverge, but what does it converge to, that's going to be something a little bit different. So for something like this, you're just saying converges. If you say it converges to pi over 4, now you've technically said something that's wrong. So only say what it converges to if you are being asked that. I'm going to go through one more example. So this one, the antiderivative, I'm going to do it off to the side because it is going to require u substitution. u is going to be ln of x. du is going to be 1 over x dx. So this ends up being du over u. So it's going to be ln of ln of x. So this one is limit as b approaches infinity. Be careful, this one does start with 2. The reason it starts with 2 is because this function is not defined at 1 because you would have 0 in the denominator. Oops. x, ln x, dx. So that's going to be limit as b approaches infinity of ln of ln of x. And as b approaches infinity, this is going to be approaching infinity, so it's basically saying ln of infinity. Don't actually write ln of infinity. That doesn't exist. But this limit is going to equal infinity, which means this series diverges by the integral test. Okay, so then we're going to talk about the p-series test. You can um, use integral test as well for, um, for some series, or actually for probably all of them, unless you don't know how to take the integral. But you're gonna, you can use that instead of the p-series test. But p-series test is going to be a little bit quicker. So this is a p-series. We talked about that in 8.4 with improper integrals. So the values of p that this is going to converge for are going to be when p is greater than 1, not greater than or equal to. So make sure you know that it went, which one is going to be you know, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, or when it's just going to be strictly less than or strictly greater. And so using the integral test, if we know that this integral converges, that means I know this series converges when p is greater than 1. So when we looked at the p-series -seri p with integrals, we looked at integrals that were from 0 to 1, and we looked at them from 1 to infinity. For series, you're pretty much only going to see 1 to infinity. You're not going to see ones that are 0 to 1. But you could see p-series for integrals that are from 0 to 1, that you just probably would not be comparing it to a series. So that's what the p-series test says, is if you have a p-series, so it needs to be 1 over n to the p. If it's something else, so if it's 2 over n to the p, technically that's not a p-series. You would have to factor out the on top, and then it's a p-series. So it, in order to use the p-series, it has to be something in exactly this form. And it's going to converge if p is greater than 1 and diverge if p is less than or equal to 1. So, for example, if you had let's say something like this, 1 over n to the 3 halves, you could use the integral test. You can take the integral of this. You would just be doing power rule. 
it's not all that hard to do, but it is more writing. Because if I have this, I recognize that it's in, that it is a P series, and I can just look at the exponent here. I can say this converges by P series test because P is greater than one. P is equal to three halves here. So that's much quicker than having to write out all of the work for an improper integral. So the tests that you have so far, integral test we just talked about, P-series test we just talked about, geometric series test. So that one, it has to be a geometric series. You can only use that if it's in the form of a geometric series. And a geometric series is going to converge if the absolute value of R if the absolute value of R is le uh, less than one and is going to diverge, let's see, so converge, and it's going to diverge if absolute value of R is greater than or equal to one. And the nth term test, so this one only tells you whether a series diverges. It does not tell you whether a series converges. So if the limit as n approaches infinity of the rule for the sequence. So you're looking at the sequence, not the um, series. If the sequence, um, if this limit is, does not equal zero, then we, know that the then we know that the series diverges. So if the limit of the sequence is not equal to zero, the series diverges. If the limit is equal to zero, that just tells us that the series might converge, we would need to find a different test. So the nth term test is a really quick test. It's a nice one to have, but it's not going to, you're not gonna be able to use it for every single series. So just be careful with that one. So these are the four that you have so far.